That's what we must understand that Juneteenth represents not only the commemoration of the end of slavery in America more than 150 years ago, but the ongoing work they have to bring true equity and racial justice into American society, which we can do. In short, this day doesn't just celebrate the past. It calls for action today. I wish all Americans a happy Juneteenth. And I'm certainly going to, in a moment, going to sign in the law, making it a federal holiday. And I have to say to you, I've only been president for several months, but I think this will go down for me, one of the greatest honors I will have had as president, not because I did it, you did it, Democrats and Republicans, but it's an enormous, enormous honor. Mmm, I'm getting notes of bubblegum and cotton candy. Dear Nat and Moby, can you tell us about Juneteenth from Miss Safford's class? Sure, Juneteenth is short for June 19th. On that date in 1865, enslaved people in Galveston Bay, Texas learned they were free. 2,000 Union troops showed up with the news. The Civil War was over, and so was slavery in the South. The news had taken a while to reach Texas, the westernmost state in the Confederacy. Juneteenth celebrates that day, when the last enslaved people in the South were set free. The Emancipation Proclamation had made it official. That was an executive order issued by Abraham Lincoln in the middle of the Civil War. It said that all enslaved people in the states, in rebellion against the United States, shall be then, thenceforward, and forever free. Meaning, it applied to the Confederate states, but not to the slave states that stayed in the Union. That's because Lincoln wanted to keep his allies in those states happy. Slavery continued there for months after the Civil War ended. The 13th Amendment outlawed it across the land in December 1865, a half year after Juneteenth. Well, the Emancipation Proclamation was still a big step forward. For one thing, it allowed black men to enlist in the Union military. Nearly 200,000 black troops went on to fight for the freedom of their brothers and sisters. But more importantly, it placed the Union squarely on the side of freedom, which meant enslaved people could escape across Union lines, and half a million of them did. Every Union victory brought an expansion of freedom. In each area of the Confederacy it conquered, enslaved people were freed. But as Union troops advanced, lots of slaveholders took their operations west. Many found refuge in a place far from the fighting, Texas. Until Major General Gordon Granger came to Galveston on Juneteenth. Standing on the balcony of the Confederate headquarters, he read from General Order No. 3. The people of Texas are informed that, in accordance with the proclamation from the Executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of personal rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. Newly freed people danced, cried, sang, and started to make plans. Word spread quickly across Texas. Seven-year-old Molly Harrell was enslaved on a plantation over 200 miles north of Galveston. She said, Me and my mother left right off. We all walked down the road singing and shouting. If only it were that easy. Many white Southerners refused to accept black people as their equals. The most hateful began a campaign of terror, attacking and killing black people across the South. Defying these threats, black Texans observed the first anniversary of Juneteenth. Back then, it was also called Emancipation Day or Jubilee Day. They sang spirituals, ate barbecue, played games, and recited the Emancipation Proclamation, even though the threat of violence was always there. 
The country passed several constitutional amendments to protect the rights of black Americans. But down south, state and local authorities refused to obey these laws. Instead, they did everything they could to make black people second-class citizens. First, black southerners were prevented from voting, so they had no influence in government. Then, laws were passed to bar black people from participating in everyday life. They couldn't eat with white people, go to the same schools, or use the same water fountains. Black citizens had to live in separate neighborhoods and could only hold lower paying jobs. And they had to treat white people like they were superior. Try to fight it, and you risk jail time, violence, and even death. This policy of sex. Juneteenth gained national attention in 2020. But did you know it has its own flag? And it just became a national holiday in the U.S.? We decoded the history of Juneteenth and what it means today. Juneteenth dates back to June 19, 1865. Technically, the end of slavery came more than two years earlier, in 1863, after President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. But places still under Confederate control didn't acknowledge the decree. Slaveholders migrated to the Deep South as a way to keep their property. By 1865, there were more than 250,000 enslaved people in Texas. On June 19th, Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas to take command of 2,000 federal troops. As they marched, Union soldiers read General Order No. 3, which declared all slaves free. The moment marked the original Juneteenth, which would be celebrated for years to come. Austin, Texas held some of the first documented celebrations after 1865. Photos from 1905 show African Americans parading down streets in Richmond, Virginia. In Houston, people decorated floats for Juneteenth festivities in 1906. But around the same time, former Confederate states began passing Jim Crow laws, making it difficult for Black people to congregate. The Texas State Fair reinvigorated celebrations in the South in the 1930s. It served as a well-known, but still segregated, meeting spot for festivities. Decades later, Texas became the first to officially recognize Juneteenth as a state holiday in 1980. Then came Florida in 1991 and Oklahoma in 1994. By 1997, Juneteenth had its own flag. The White Star represents Texas, the Lone Star State, where slaves were the last to find out they were free. In its patriotic colors are a reminder that slaves and their descendants are all Americans. By the 21st century, communities across America were celebrating Juneteenth. Historically, when we think about, you know, holidays like the 4th of July, clearly that wasn't for Black people. And so I think Juneteenth has sort of come in and is a substitute day for Black people to really celebrate our experience in the country. The Black Lives Matter movement brought national attention to the holiday in the summer of 2020. No peace! Police! For the first time, companies like Nike, Twitter, and Uber gave employees a paid day off to commemorate Juneteenth. Please do your research on Juneteenth. Understand why it is so important to us. This year, President Biden made Juneteenth the nation's 12th federal holiday. I think this will be down for me. It's one of the greatest honors I will have had as president. The resolution went from the Senate to the House to Biden's desk in the week leading up to the holiday. And it comes after House member Sheila Jackson Lee first introduced the Juneteenth National Independence Day Act in 2020. After 156 years, Juneteenth celebrations nationwide are here to stay. Making Juneteenth a national holiday is important because... We can't rest to the promise of equality is fulfilled for every one of us in every corner of this nation. That, to me, is the meaning of Juneteenth. That's what it's about. So let's make this, this very Juneteenth tomorrow the first that our nation will celebrate all together as one nation. A Juneteenth of action on many fronts. One of those is vaccinations. Tomorrow, the vice president will be in Atlanta on a bus tour, helping to spread the word like all of you have been doing on life-saving vaccines. 
And across the country this weekend, including here in Washington, people will be canvassing and hosting events in their communities, going door to door, encouraging vaccinations. We've built equity into the heart of the vaccination program from day one, but we still have more work to do to close the racial gap in vaccination rates. The more we can do that, the more we can save lives. Today also marks the sixth anniversary of the tragic deaths of Mother Emanuel Church in Charleston, South Carolina. A killer, motivated by hate, intending to start a race war in South Carolina. He joined his victims in a Bible study class. Then he took their lives in the house of worship. It's a reminder that our work to root out hate never ends because hate only hides. It never fully goes away, it hides. And when you breathe oxygen under that rock, it comes out. That's what we must understand that Juneteenth represents not only the commemoration of the end of slavery, in America more than 150 years ago, but the ongoing work they have to bring true equity and racial justice into American society, which we can do. In short, this day doesn't just celebrate the past. It calls for action today. I wish all Americans a happy Juneteenth. I'm certainly going to, in a moment, going to sign in the law, making it a federal holiday. And I have to say to you, I've only been president for several months, but I think this will go down for me, one of the greatest honors I will have had as president, not because I did it, you did it, Democrats and Republicans, but it's an enormous, enormous honor.